This video will go through the general assembly process for the Nordic Track T Series treadmill. Because of continuing product improvements, your assembly steps may not be identical to those shown. Please refer to your user's manual and any assembly updates that came with your particular treadmill if you have any questions to any assembly steps shown here. This video is intended to be a supplement to the directions in your user's manual. Assembly will require two persons. Assembly also requires the following tools, the included hex keys, one Phillips screwdriver, and one adjustable wrench. You may find it convenient to use a set of socket wrenches or ratcheting wrenches. To avoid damaging parts, do not use power tools. Place all parts in a cleared area and remove the packing materials. Do not dispose of the packing materials until you finish all assembly steps. Make sure the power cord is unplugged. Remove the tie securing the upright wire to the front of the base. Next, identify the right upright. Lay the right upright near the base. Tie the wire tie in the right upright securely around the end of the upright wire. Then, insert the upright wire into the lower end of the right upright as you pull the other end of the wire tie through the right upright. Press the grommet into the square hole in the right upright. Make sure not to pinch the ground wire. Then, attach the ground wire to the right upright with a number eight by half inch silver ground screw. Hold the right upright against the base. Make sure not to pinch the upright wire. Attach the right upright and a wheel with two three eighths by two and a quarter inch screws, a three eighths by one and a quarter inch screw, a 3 8 by 1 and 3 quarters inch screw, and four 3 8 star washers. Do not fully tighten the screws yet. Attach the left upright and the other wheel in the same way. Note, there are no wires on the left side. Remove and save the four 5 16 by 3 quarter inch patch screws that come pre-installed in the uprights. Identify the left and right base covers. Slide the left base cover onto the left upright and slide the right base cover onto the right upright. Do not press the base covers into place yet. Insert the tab on one of the cover brackets into the slot in the left upright. Attach the cover bracket with two number eight by one half inch screws. Attach the other cover bracket to the right upright with two screws. On the right upright, the slot is below the two small screws. Position the upright wire to the inside of the right upright. With the help of a second person, set the console base assembly on the right and left upright. Position the upright wire so that it is on the inside of the assembly. Be certain not to pinch the upright wire. Partially tighten a 5 16 by 3 quarter inch screw into the center hole on each side of the console base assembly and the top of the right and left uprights. Do not fully tighten the screws. Identify the right handrail assembly. Remove and discard the two pre-installed placeholder screws. Next, carefully raise the pulse crossbar enough to allow you to slide the handrail onto the console base assembly. The cover bracket should slide into the narrow space in the lower portion of the handrail assembly. Attach the left handrail assembly to the left side in the same way. Attach the right handrail assembly with two 5 16 by two and a half inch screws and two 5 16 star washers. Do not fully tighten the screws yet. You may need to adjust the position of the right handrail assembly to align the screws properly. It's important to avoid damaging the pulse crossbar in this step. Do not use power tools and do not over tighten the number 10 by 3 quarter inch screws. Attach the pulse crossbar to the right and left handrail assemblies with four number 10 by 3 quarter inch screws and four number 10 star washers. Start all of the screws and then tighten them. With the help of a second person, hold the console assembly near the console base assembly. Locate the console wire in the right side of the console assembly. Connect the upright wire to the console wire. The connector should slide together easily and snap into place. If they do not, turn one connector and try again. If you do not connect the connectors properly, the console may become damaged when you turn on the power. Insert the console and upright wires into the console assembly and position the wires on the decal. Connect the wire from the center of the pulse bar assembly to the wire from the console assembly. Insert these wires into the hole in the console base. Set the console assembly on the brackets on the console base. Do not pinch any wires. Make sure that the wires are inserted into the console assembly. Then attach the console assembly with two 5 16 by one and three quarter inch screws and two 5 16 star washers. Start both screws and then tighten them. 
Attach the small console cover with two number eight by three quarter inch screws. Do not over tighten the screws. Note, use the outer two holes in the underside of the console base assembly. Tighten the 5 16 by 3 quarter inch console base assembly screws in the center hole of the handrail assembly on top of the uprights that was left loose earlier in the assembly. Then tighten two number 8 by 3 quarter inch screws into the handrail assembly in the location shown. Do not over tighten the screws. Repeat these steps on the other side. Finally, firmly tighten the two 5 16 by 2 and a half inch handrail screws that were left loose on each side of the handrail assembly. Next, identify the handrail cover. Insert the tab on the right handrail cover into the right handrail assembly. Then, press the right handrail cover onto the console assembly. The right handrail cover has a mushroom fastener that should snap into the hole in the base assembly. Then, attach the right handrail with a number eight by one inch screw. Do not over tighten the screw. Attach the left handrail cover in the same way. Carefully slide the upright crossbar between the left and right uprights. Attach the upright crossbar with the four 5 16 by 3 quarter inch patch screws that you removed from the uprights previously and four 5 16 inch star washers. Start all four patch screws and then tighten them. Insert the tray from the front of the treadmill and set it on the upright crossbar. Attach the tray to the upright crossbar with four number eight by half inch screws. Start all four screws and then tighten them. Take care. If the treadmill is assembled on a smooth surface, it may roll forward while assembling the storage latch. Remove the two 5 16 by 3 quarter inch patch screws from the latch crossbar. Raise the frame to the upright position. Have a second person hold the frame until the storage latch is completely installed. Install the latch crossbar to the frame. Make sure that the This Side Towards Belt sticker is facing the treadmill and the bracket is toward the ground. Attach the latch crossbar to the brackets on the frame with the two 5 16 inch by 3 quarter inch patch screws that you just removed and two 5 16 inch star washers. Remove the 5 16 inch nut and the 5 16 inch by 1 and 3 quarter inch bolt from the bracket on the base. Next, orient the storage latch with the narrow end towards the base of the treadmill and the sticker facing the ground. Attach the lower end of the storage latch to the bracket on the base with the 5 16 inch by 1 and 3 quarter inch bolt and the 5 16 inch nut. Then, raise the storage latch to a vertical position and remove the wire tie. Align the upper end of the storage latch with the bracket on the latch crossbar and insert the 5 16 inch by 2 and a quarter inch bolt through the bracket and the storage latch. This will push a spacer out of the storage latch. Discard the spacer. Next, tighten the 5 16 inch nut onto the 5 16 inch by 2 and a quarter inch bolt. Do not over tighten the nut. The storage latch must be able to pivot. Then, lower the frame by pushing forward slightly on the deck and pressing the top of the latch with your foot. While the top of the latch is depressed, lower the deck. Firmly tighten the four 3 8 inch by two and a quarter inch screws and the two 3 8 inch by one and a quarter inch screws. Next, tighten the two 3 8 inch by one and three quarter inch screws. The wheels must be able to turn freely. Next, set the left inner base cover onto the lower end of the left upright. Slide the left base cover downward and press it onto the left inner base cover. Then, set the right inner base cover onto the lower end of the right upright. Slide the right base cover downward and press it onto the right inner base cover. After the treadmill is assembled, inspect it to make sure that it is assembled correctly and that it functions properly. Make sure that all the parts are properly tightened before you use the treadmill. Be sure to follow all important warnings, precautions, and instructions as described in the user's manual. Be sure to use the treadmill connected to a surge protector and place the treadmill on a floor mat to protect the treadmill and other property.